All right, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, another video today here about plumbing and we're actually starting out in the garage today. Uh, so I finished running all my water lines, at least all the ones I'm gonna run for now. Um, and now it's time to start terminating all of the lines uh, so I can go ahead and do drywall and whatnot after that. Um, and I wanna start with my hose connection. So I got <clears throat> two of them here in the garage and these are actually uh, treated water. Uh, so we have super hard water here. So these are softened and um, I don't know, whatever, purified water. Um, and that's what we'll end up using for washing our cars and that type of stuff. Um, just cause that's what, softened water works a lot better for actually washing stuff. Um, and then I have three other ones that actually just be generally yard use for hosing stuff down or watering the lawn or whatever. So um, those, so all, f how many of that? So that's five. All five of them we gotta put um, hose connections on. Actually one of them already has it cause I wanted to get that hooked up. But um, we gotta put these hose bibs on all five of them. And what I could just crimp this on here and stick it in the hole and screw it onto the wall. Um, but I would like to put a block behind it, just a piece of wood, uh, make it a little more durable, make it look a little nicer, hopefully. So that's what we're gonna work on now. Um, basically what I'm gonna do for the individual ones, uh, I'm gonna wrap, I have a uh, piece of basically PVC plywood, I guess, really it's kind of looks like. It's a four by eight sheet, or no, it's not. It's a two by four sheet of that plastic, I don't even know what it's called, but it's basically just plastic wood. Um, and I'm gonna rip that down into blocks. So um, for the ones that are just single, I think we're gonna do six by six blocks. Um, and then this one here, I guess I haven't even measured it yet, but um, if we're at like six inches on the sides, um, looks like there's actually perfectly six inches between them. So we'll make this one, what, what does that end up being? Like six by 18, we'll make this one. So um, let's go into the, uh, the shop we got set up here. Uh, we'll rip that thing down. Um, we'll make, we need three six by six blocks and then one six by 18 block. So uh, let's go get this ripped down and we'll get them put in. Well, you know that old adage, measure twice, cut once. It's a good thing I didn't uh, rip this down quite yet. Uh, as I was walking over here, those numbers didn't quite seem right. Um, and I actually only want three inches on each side of the spigots, not six, because the rest of them are all gonna be six by six blocks with the spigot in the middle. Um, so that one in the garage needs to be 12 by six, not 18 by six. So uh, good thing I caught that. Hopefully I don't mess anything else up. Um, here is my piece of whatever this stuff is called. I have no idea. Um, and it should be, yeah, it's two foot by four foot here. And we need a 12 footer and then we need three six footers. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to quite, a 12 footer, a 12 incher and then three six inchers. So what's that, two and a half foot that we're gonna need? So I'm basically just gonna rip it the long way. This is a little over four foot. So I'm gonna rip basically a six inch section off of here. Um, and then we can cut the, cut the links we need over there on the chop saw. So um, let's get the vent set right here. We'll set the depth of our saw blade here. Basically we want it so it just kind of comes up to the top there. And then uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna rip this down and uh, yeah, cut the length. So let's get her going. All right, one rip, uh, this stuff's super easy to cut. Um, basically like hot knife through butter, right? So um, let's go over to the miter box and we'll cut these things to length. All right, so here at the miter box, uh, we have everything all set up. Uh, we get the miter box, everything's plugged in, ready to go. And we actually have this cool adjustable fence here. Um, so basically I can just set the distance I want. So I'm just go ahead and slide this to a foot. It's actually off, so I'm actually gonna set it like a foot and eight. Um, set that there and then I can just slide my board up against it here. Um, and actually, that, that ends up super square. So let's square that end up a little bit first. There's a little sawdust in here. So let's square this end up. And now we'll go ahead and slide up against our stop. So there you go, that is our, yeah, this is our one for the garage, six by 12. Um, so let's go there. Now we need three more of them that are six by sixes. And because this fence is so far away from the blade, we actually have a little stop here. So, oh, that one. this one right here, basically just a 12 inch block. 
we can put it in here and then I know that I should add 12 inches to my measurement is. So I need to set the fence at 18 inches and then we'll get what we need. So here you go, that is all set. We'll, rip, we'll cut three of them down. We'll be good to go. All right, and that is it. We have our uh, three six by six blocks and then one six by 12 block for in the garage. Um, now we just gotta kind of lay it out. Uh, I wanna drill my hole through each one of these so we can put that, that pipe through there, that hose bib through there, and then we can get these attached to the wall. So uh, let me get a drill bit and we will drill these guys out. Okay, I have gone ahead and taped all of these three together. So I just have to mark it once and drill it once. Save me a little bit of time, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> the only downfall is if I screwed up, I screw all three of them up, but I shouldn't. We should be good, should be good. So basically I'm just gonna mark the center here, three inches that way, three inches this way. Should be pretty close, we can double check it. Eh, we're off by like a sixteenth, but that's close enough for, uh, that's close enough for my house, so. Uh, mark that one, and then this one, we wanna do the center this way. So three inches in, three inches in, and then we'll go three inches in from each side as well. So, three inches there. And three inches there. And that should be uh, all we gotta do. If I measure these, they should be six inches apart. Yep, right on the money. So, we just got to uh, drill out those couple holes and we can go in and install these guys. All right, there we go. They are all drilled out. Knock all the little bornies off of it. Let's go get them installed. All right, so we got our uh, board all cut, holes drilled, ready to go. Let's make sure it'll fit on the spot. Yep, looks like those holes line up pretty good, so that's good news. Um, so now we go ahead and get this mounted. Um, one thing to note, on this place, I do have access to it in the basement. So we're just gonna go ahead and put these pipes through this way, and then I will uh, crimp them on the inside um, from yeah, from the inside of the basement. Um, some of the other ones, we get the crimp out here and then push the whole tube through. So you'll see that when we do that in a minute too. But um, So first off, I just want to caulk around the back here. This one's really not too big of a deal because we're in our garage, uh, getting water behind it, it's not gonna be too likely. Um, but the other ones, is gonna be really important that we get a good caulk seal all the way around. So uh, I am going to do that. We're just gonna put a nice bead all the way around the inside here. Kind of go around the middle, just make sure we get it good and covered. I'm not actually really sure what to do around the pipes themselves. I think we'll probably just do right behind the hose picket, um, but we'll see. So let's go ahead and get the get some screws here. So we'll just hold this up here. The uh, cock does do a really good job of holding it up to the wall, actually. I'm going to just throw one screw in the corner here. Make sure we're kind of lined up. I'm not really too worried about hitting any studs or anything um, because we do have the uh, rim joist or rim plate that goes all the way around right here. So uh, not too big of an issue. We don't really worry about studs too much. So uh, just throw a level on here quick. Make sure we're kind of close. Doesn't have to be perfect, but might as well do it as good as we can the first time. And we'll throw two more screws on the top. I'm not sure if the top ones will hit anything or not, um, but we'll see. Yep, there's something back there. Maybe I actually put one in the middle too. It's kind of bone out a little bit in the middle. Put one there. Put one down. Perfect. So now we got a nice, secure, um, durable place to mount our hose bibs to. Um, so basically how these work, they're just um, oh, just a little two pieces here. The way it works is that the shutoff knob is here, obviously, but it actually shuts the valve off way back in here. And that's so that this part is inside the house where it's heated. You don't have to worry about it freezing. Um, and then this little bracket shim here um, goes on the top here. And basically what that does is just make sure there's just a little bit of slope to this pipe, a little bit of slope downward. So when you shut it off, any water that's in there will run out. So 
Um, I'm just gonna stick it in here, do a nice little test fit. Yeah, everything looks good. Um, that's exactly what we want it to look like. Uh, looks like I am gonna need an extension for my drill bit because there ain't no way that's gonna fit in there. So let me grab that extension once and we'll get those, get those mounted. All right, there we go. We got our extension on here. Um, I do want to put a little caulk around here. Um, I'm not sure actually the best way to do this, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and just put a little caulk around the top of this just to keep any water from running in. Really not water at this point. It's really just going to be bugs. Um, so I'm just going to kind of fill this hole up with, with caulk. And I always forget that with this caulk gun. You got to flip that thing around. We'll gloop that hole up good, and then we'll wipe off any excess if there is any. Um, so that should be good. Make sure it looks kind of level. We're just going to kind of snug that side up, and I think I actually went too tight. Back that off just a hair, get the other side in there nice and level, and then we can tighten them both up. There we go, that's good and secure. Um, we just have to connect it on the inside and let's go ahead and throw the other one in here a second. Um, probably not gonna do a whole lot of commentary because it's exactly the same. All right, that one is all set then. Um, I just have to crimp them on the inside, but we'll do that later. Let's go ahead and do the rest of them on the outside. All right, rinse and repeat, hose bib number two. I actually have to finish drilling the hole out for this one and then we'll put the block in here. Um, Pretty much it, exactly the same as the last one, except there's only one hose instead of two. And I made a mess out of the caulk on that one, so I'm just gonna get the paper towel, clean that up quick. And then we'll do uh, the last two. Okay, that is all set. Now we just gotta crimp the uh, end on here. And be good to go. On to the last one. Um, the last one is gonna be a little tricky because um, I kind of messed it up. Uh, so I'll explain when we get over there. All right, so I will give you five seconds to try and figure out what I did wrong. Yeah, that's right. I put this one on and it's all hooked up and all ready to go and I never put the block behind it. So um, I'm not gonna be able to just try, slide it through the hole into the board. So what I did is I went and uh, set my miter box on a 45 and I just cut the bottom out. So the goal is I'm just gonna slide this over the top Slide this one under the bottom, caulk those joints, screw it all in. Hopefully it's gonna work. Um, it's not gonna look as pretty as the rest of them. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the one in the front of my house that everybody's gonna see. So that was, that was kind of a downer, but um, I'm not willing to go and buy a new hose spigot, at least not right now. Maybe I will um, down the road, uh, cause I get sick of seeing it all the time. But for now, uh, we're gonna give this a try. Hopefully this works and doesn't look terrible. So let's get this other one, other one disconnected and uh, we'll hook it up. It's not gonna look too terrible. Um, you'll definitely be able to see these lines, um, but not really all I can do about it. Uh, if you have a recommendation of how I could have done this better um, without doing it right the first time since I screwed it up, uh, let me know. I'd be happy to hear it. I'm sure I'm gonna screw something up and we could use the same thing again in the future. So uh, I'm gonna get this caulked up and screwed in um, and we'll wrap these up, wrap up these hose bibs. All right, there we go. Um, it's not terrible. It's not my favorite, but it'll get the job done. So uh, that is it for out here. All the hose bibs are installed. Um, I got most of them connected already. Some of them I did off camera. So um, now we gotta go ahead and um, terminate all of the connections I jammed up through the floor into the bathrooms and kitchen and whatnot. So uh, let's go, let's move inside and we'll, we'll wrap those up.
Okay, so now we got all those hose bibs wrapped up outside. We are now inside. Uh, we are going to work on finishing up these water lines on the inside. Um, hopefully we can wrap it all up today. I think we should be able to. Um, for the sinks and everything, I just got to stub them out. Uh, we got these little brackets here that we're going to be working on right now. Um, and then I got to uh, plumb up the showers. Those are going to be a little more work because I got a solder pipe and stuff for those. Uh, so we'll see how those goes. Uh, hopefully we can get those done today. So, but first things first, we need to hook up these or stub out these pipes for our sinks. Uh, now these are all going to be underneath cabinets and stuff, so I don't really care what they look like when they stick out. I mean, I do a little bit, but um, not enough that they have to be copper. They're fine if they're packed sticking out, nobody's ever going to see them. Um, so I have these little brackets here. Basically the way they work uh, is they just clamp onto the pipe like this. It bends around and then flips in there. Um, and I just screw this into the wall. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any work to screw this into the wall. So I have a little block I made here that actually hopefully fits. I haven't tested it, but so yeah, that'll go right in there like that. Um, screw that in, then we can attach those. So let's get this guy screwed in here. All right, now these guys. I don't know if it's easier to screw them in first. I'm gonna put the pipe in first. Might be easier to screw them in first, so let's give that a shot. Okay, so the trick to these guys, um, I actually tried to use these brackets in my basement when I did that, and I could not for the life of me get them to work. The pipes kept pop popping out, and it was a mess. Um, it turns out there's a little tab on this side right here that after you put the pipe in, if you flip that up, um, then you don't have any issues. So clearly it was just a user error downstairs when I was trying to use them before. Um, but that's not the end of the world. I can handle user errors. So just a heads up for you. If you use little brackets like this and have problems with it, there's a little tab on it that you got to flip up. So um, got both of those done there now. Um, those are all set to go. I'll cut these off. They don't need to be near this long. I'll cut these off later. Um, but yeah, that's it. We have a bunch more sinks to go now. So I'm just going to kind of rock through those and uh, then we'll hit our showers. Those will be fun. Okay, so I've been messing around with these showers. I read all the instructions for the nozzles and stuff. I've done a shower before, but I've only ever done one. Uh, this one's a little bit different. We actually have two valves. So this is the main valve um, that controls the hot and cold or the valve body, I guess. Uh, that'll go right here. That's where my water lines will run into on the side here. Um, and then this little guy is actually for a diverter, diverter, I don't know, a diverter valve. We're gonna put in a hand shower here. Not because we need a hand shower, but just because it's nice to clean the shower with it. Um, so we're gonna put one of those in. So I think I should make a diverter valve so I can choose between the shower head and the hand shower. So that'll go here. Um, I don't know which way it goes. There's a top right down here somewhere, right here. Okay, so this will go here and that will go here. Just connect them with a short piece of pipe. Um, this is a four way diverter valve and we only need three of the connections. So I have to put a cap in here. And the same thing is true for this. This isn't a tub, this is just a shower. So I gotta throw a cap in the uh, bottom of this of this guy here. So um, I think it'll be easier to do those when before I mount it on the, on the wall. So let's uh, try my hand at soldering. I'm not all that good at it. Uh, so just take that as a note for this video. This is not an instruction video on how to do plumbing. Um, this is just watching me hopefully figure it out, but most likely fail at it. So um, I got some scrap wood to solder on and below me here. So uh, let's see if we can put these caps in. All right, there we go. Those uh, caps are on. Um, I may have made a mess out of that second one. We'll see. Um, I'm gonna pressure test this all anyway. So if it leaks, I can just solder it again, not a big deal. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and tack on, um, just kind of temporary screw up that bottom valve that we can connect the two um, and get going from there. So um, I'm gonna move the camera and we will get going on that.
All right, that is it for the shower valves. Um, pretty much everything is terminated up here that I can terminate. So uh, the next step is to connect everything to the manifold downstairs and uh, pressure test it. So that's what we'll do next. See you in the basement. All right, and that is all set. Yes, I am wearing different clothes than in the video. Um, this is actually like three weeks after I shot the rest of this video. I was just editing it together, totally realized I never did an outro. Uh, it was probably like 10 o'clock at night that we were doing that last stuff and I just shut off the camera and went to bed. So um, this is the outro, uh, that is all set. Um, since that video completed, we actually did get approval um, all of my plumbing rough in past, so that is awesome. Um, you can see this is all hooked up down here. We did pressure test all of these, all of them that we could anyway, uh, and nothing, uh, I take that back. One shower leaked, had to resolder that a couple times, but other than that, we we're good to go. So that is all set. Um, so yeah, pretty much wrapped up with plumbing. Now we are on to the next stage, which is getting ready for drywall. Uh, hopefully that's gonna happen in a week and a half or so. Who knows what the schedule is going to be like for you seeing it, but um, in real time, that's going to happen in about a week and a half, hopefully. Um, but I have some stuff I have to finish up. I have to do some uh, HVAC, do some insulation, uh, do some other odds and ends stuff. So hopefully there's going to be some videos of that coming up before drywall, uh, and then we'll rock out drywall. So I uh, appreciate you watching the video. Um, definitely stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. I uh, definitely appreciate that. Um, and I'll also queue up a, a video over there for you so you can uh, keep watching the channel and uh, seeing what's going on. So I appreciate you hanging out with that, me and uh, following me along my journey and I uh, will see you next time.